Hi and welcome to this tutorial on Hibernate. Uh, this is another one of those important tutorials. I'm going to talk about a concept that's uh, fundamental to Hibernate. So make sure you uh, try out the examples in this tutorial. Probably watch the tutorial a couple of times so that you are sure you get the concepts here. Uh, the concept that I'm going to talk about in this tutorial is um, the concept of a transient object and a persistent object. Uh, this is something that we've been seeing all along in the tutorials but without actually realizing it. So we'll spend some time and understand what a transient object is and what a persistent object is. And I'm gonna explain these concepts with, uh, you know, the best way to explain anything, which is by seeing them in action. So we'll write some code. Um, I have this uh, main method here. Uh, this is something that I've been using all along the tutorials. I have a session factory here, which reads from a configuration and uh, I'm opening a session and beginning a transaction. And here at the end of it, I'm committing the transaction and closing. So all my Hibernate uh, transaction code will go over here. Now, this is a common thing that we did earlier. We had a user details uh, entity class. We had marked it as an entity. And uh, all it does is it, you know, it, it just has an ID and a name. The ID has been marked as at ID annotation with a generated value. And the name is just another property. Now, we did this in our earlier tutorial, but let's try this again. I will instantiate a user object. And I will set the username. Okay, so now I have my uh, user object here. This is an entity. We have uh, defined this as an entity here. So I'm instantiating a new object of the user details class and I'm setting a name to it. Now what I would do normally is I would have a session dot save of the user here. Okay, so when this line is entered, hibernate, would save this user into the database. So what would happen is it would have a new record in the table for this user. Now this is uh, this is actually a two-step process. The first step is to instantiate an object, and the second step is to actually pass this object to a session dot save. If you do not do this step then this object is not saved to the database. It's, it's fairly simple because we are not asking Hibernate to save this. Now, without passing an object to a session.save, even though it is an entity object, uh, if we are not passing this to a session.save, this object is said to be what is called as a transient object. That means that this object is not persistent. It's not saved by Hibernate. Hibernate doesn't know that this object has to be saved. So that's a transient object. And now when I use a session.save to save this object, then it becomes a persistent object. When, it, when an object is persistent, then Hibernate tracks that object and saves it. Now, what do I mean by track an object? Let's run a couple of tests to find out. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this. Uh, I'm gonna comment this out, so it's not gonna do a session.save. Now what happens if I run this? Okay, before I run this, there's one more change I need to make. Uh, I'll go to the hibernate.cfg.xml and uh, I will mark this as a create. Um, I'm changing the hbm to ddl.auto property as create. So I want the schema to be dropped. Uh, right now, if I run this, it's gonna have data of our previous example. So I'm gonna you know, remove all of that and create the schema from the scratch. So I'll save this file. And of course, I'll save this. So what we are doing here is we are instantiating a new object of the entity class, but we're not passing it to Hibernate. I'm just beginning a transaction and I'm closing it. Now, if I run this, It is uh, obvious what the result is going to be. There will not be any records. Now, if I do a session.save, of this object that I'm initializing here. And run this. 
now it's actually going to insert the value so i can see a user record available here now the interesting thing that i want to show you is this now i've done a session dot save right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to update the user object here after the session dot save well before before the session dot save is straightforward now if i do a user dot set username say updated user okay now what's the what's the value going to be in the database obviously it will be the updated user okay simple enough now the question is what happens if i do this change after the session.save now i have a user object here i have already asked hibernate to save this and now after i've asked hibernate to save this i am changing one of the properties of the user now will the user in the table the will the value be test user or the updated user let's find that out if i run this here you can see you see an insert statement and an update statement what's going on here now let's query it again the value is updated user so what's happening here is that when i do a session dot save hibernate is doing an insert of this data it's inserting test user but then when i change the username of the user object and i'm not i'm not asking hibernate to save it again uh, you know note that here i'm not doing anything else here i'm just changing the property of the user object but what hibernate does is it automatically triggers the update so that the value in the database is also reflecting this change so this opens up a lot of new questions here now how does hibernate know what change to get uh, reflected in the database the answer is that once you pass uh, you know an object an entity object to a session dot save after that any change you make to that object will go as an update statement to the database so whatever changes you make at the end of the program you know once you call once you commit the transaction and once you do a session dot close the last well, you know state of the user object this is what's going to be the state of the database so you might do you might do 10 different updates here but then the last update that you're going to do before you commit the transaction and close the session so that last one is what's going to go into the database so of course if you have a different property then the last update of that property is going to go in since i have just one username here so it's the last update for that username so what happens is that no matter what change you do here you know whatever changes you make it is going to do the update now let's let's update this one more time now i will i've set the username as updated user Okay, I'm going to do a set username twice after I've done a session dot save. Now, will there be two updates entered? Now, note that there is just one update. So again, but if you look at the, if you look at the database, you see that the last value has been reflected, even though the update has been called only once. How is that happening? How is this update not getting reflected? What's happening is that not every change you make triggers an update query. Now Hibernate intelligently detects what is the change that needs to go to the database and then it figures out what is the least number of updates that need to be made we're going to look at this in a bit more detail but what's important to understand here is that once you hand over an object to hibernate and say hey hibernate save this object for me then hibernate is going to watch that object for any changes so no matter what change you make hibernate is going to automatically fire update queries so that the row in the database that corresponds to this object is reflecting the changes that you have made in the object so that is the important difference between a transient object and a persistent object before an object is handed over to hibernate it is a transient object hibernate does not track this object over here but 
when I do a session dot save, then I'm giving the responsibility to hibernate to make sure that the object state matches the database state. So no matter what updates I make to this persistent object, it is going to get reflected in the database. So here it's a transient object. Once I hand it over to Hibernate, it becomes a persistent object and any changes made to the persistent object get reflected in the database. Once I do a session dot close, it becomes what's called as a detached object. A detached object is similar to the transient object in the sense that Hibernate is not going to track the changes. And uh, no matter what changes, no matter what updates you make to the object, it is not going to be persisted in the database. But uh, a detached object means that uh, it was the object was tracked by Hibernate before, it was persisted by Hibernate before, but now that the session has been closed, it is no longer tracked by Hibernate and now it is in a detached state. A transient state is when it is not even, you know, Hibernate hasn't even looked at that object. So it's a transient. But, uh, you know, once Hibernate takes up that object, it becomes persistent. And once the object has, I mean, once the session has been closed, the object becomes detached. Now, say I do an update here. I say, session dot user dot set username now i do this if i run this let's see what's the database state it does not have the update that i've made after the session close now this update has not gone through to, to the database because after the session closes, Hibernate says, okay, my responsibility is done. I have tracked this object as long as the session was open and I have saved all the data to the database. But then after the session is closed, this user is not Hibernate's responsibility. It becomes a detached object. This is what we need to remember. Transient object before we hand it over to Hibernate. Once we hand it over to Hibernate, once we do a session.save, Hibernate takes the responsibility of tracking the object and making database updates. And once the session is closed, the object becomes a detached object and Hibernate is not gonna track the changes. Hope this is clear. We're gonna look at a few more, uh, you know, um, implications of this concept in the next tutorial.